get balanced and boom! Wow. That was funny, so we just had to include it. To be fair, it does make that sound. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're subscribed to our newsletter, then you've probably heard the news. We've got our hands on the latest from SkyRC, the automatic tire balancer. Now, we're big fans of SkyRC around here because they're always coming out with some pretty innovative tools for the RC hobby scene. You might be familiar with a couple of their hits, like the GPS speedometer or the corner weight scale system. When the new tire balancer arrived, our first move was to see if anyone had already tried it out. Given it was so new, we weren't even sure there were reviews out there. But sure enough, we found a few early adopters who had shared their thoughts. The feedback was all over the place. Some really liked it, while others seemed to struggle with making it work. So, before we could think about officially launching it, we knew it was essential to test it ourselves. Alright, let's break down what we're diving into today. By the end of this video, there are two main things we really want you to walk away with. First off, we're going to introduce you to this new gadget. What it is, what it's supposed to do, and how it works. We're keeping it straightforward because honestly, this tool is all about making the tire balancing process easy. Second, we're aware there's been some feedback about issues users have encountered. We're not just going to talk about these, we're going to share our own experiences with the device, including the hurdles we came across and how we overcame them. Now, we figure many of you already understand the need to balance your tires, but for anyone who's still wondering why bother, we've got something special lined up at the end of this video. Think of it as a mini science class. We'll throw in a bit of math and a demonstration to really show you why this step is key. We are certain it will help you see why keeping your tires balanced is super important. So let's take a look at this tire balancer. This tool is really something special because it automatically balances your tires with a precision that wasn't possible before. Usually, balancing a tire involves a simple setup where the tire is hung on a rod and left to spin until it stops, with the heavier part naturally settling at the bottom. Then it's all about guessing how much weight to stick on the opposite side to make it balanced. It's a lot of trial and error. And if the imbalance is slight, it takes even longer to sort out because you're basically just guessing and waiting. But with this new balancer, things are different. It accurately tells you where the tire is off balance and exactly how much weight you need to add to fix it. So there's no guessing involved. It makes the whole process quicker and simpler. All right, now is the perfect time to dive in and show you this device in action. For this test, I grabbed a pair of front and rear wheels for a 1 tenth scale buggy. The front tires came factory glued, but I had to glue the rear ones myself. Big thanks to the staff at SDRC Raceway who didn't just help me to buy correct tires, but also gave me a quick tutorial on how to glue them. Before we get started, there's a small but crucial step you need to take, tightening the screws on the bottom of the device. The reason behind this is quite straightforward. These screws actually secure the scale sensor and the whole motor assembly with it against the bottom plate inside of the machine. These screws being loose actually serve as a safeguard to protect the sensor from taking a hit if the device is knocked or dropped, preventing any damage during transportation. Additionally, I discovered that the fixture the device comes with plays a key role in centering the shaft when the screws are loose. If the shaft is allowed to wobble, it could lead to damage. So, if you're going to loosen those screws again, make sure to first reattach the fixture to the shaft. This ensures everything stays properly aligned, helping to keep the balancer in prime condition. Next up is the calibration process. To start, you power up the device while holding the button to enter calibration mode. But before you dive in, there's a crucial step. Make sure to remove the adapter. This is a common mistake and a big reason why many reviews mention failed calibrations. I'll show you later how not removing the adapter at this stage will result in failure. Next, you either weigh the adapter, or if you already know its weight, you simply enter that information. I'm on the fence about how much tweaking the weight really impacts things, given the device's claimed 0.2 gram accuracy. It made me wonder why calibration is necessary when many kitchen scales with similar accuracy don't require it. But moving forward, after inputting the weight, you then attach the adapter. Here, I also want to mention an important point. There's a bit of flexibility in how you attach the adapter to the shaft, how far in or out it goes. Just ensure it's pushed in far enough for the top pin to slot into the groove on the adapter. This step is crucial for securing the wheel later. 
Now that we've got the device calibrated, it's ready to go for actual balancing. I'll cut right to the chase and focus on the regular balancing process, skipping the early hiccups. Just a quick heads up, it's important to tighten the wheel on the adapter reasonably well. If it's too loose, the wheel might unscrew itself during rotation, since it turns in the same direction as the adapter's thread. The machine takes the wheel for a few spins, stops, and then positions the wheel at a specific position. On the screen, it shows me the amount of weight to add to the wheel's bottom in that position. I follow through, add the weight, and hit continue. After another spin, it then suggests a second adjustment, likely because the initial imbalance was significant. To calculate the mass, the software must assume a certain radius of the wheel, where the weight is added. This is because the scale actually measures force, not mass, and the centripetal force of the imbalance is proportional to the radius. So if the imbalance is large and the actual radius differs from the machine's assumption, it might lead to miscalculation and could explain why a second tweak is necessary. Once the final adjustments are in place, the device confirms the wheel is balanced and we're all set. Next, I want to show you the rear wheel, the one I glued myself, which only needed a minor adjustment. This was an interesting find, suggesting that purchasing wheels and tires separately and gluing them yourself could lead to better balanced tires. At the end of this segment, I want to add a quick note on how I evaluated the effectiveness of the balance. To do this, I used the Sky RC Tire Sander to spin the wheels at a relatively high speed and observe the vibrations, both before and after using the balancer. The unbalanced tires vibrated intensely, enough to make the sander start sliding across the table, and I had to hold it with my hand. In contrast, the balanced tires spun much more smoothly, and the sander stayed in place. This simple test clearly demonstrated the difference. So how does this tire balancer work its magic? Let's take a quick look at what SkyRC says about it on their website. They talk about two key parts that make this tool so smart. First up, there's this thing called a low capacity, high accuracy aluminum load cell. In simpler terms, it's a sensitive scale sensor that can measure weight with up to 0.2 gram accuracy. This is what makes sure the balancer can tell you exactly how much weight to add or remove to get your tire perfectly balanced. Then there's a stepper motor. This isn't your ordinary motor. It moves in tiny, precise steps. And because it moves step by step, it knows exactly how much it has turned. This helps the balancer figure out where the heavy part of the tire is. So you know where to add the counterweight. I was pretty curious about the exact design of this device, so I decided to take a closer look by opening it up and shining some light into this black box. Here you can clearly see the load cell at the bottom, and above that, the entire motor assembly with the shaft is mounted on it. About the 0.2 gram accuracy, it might not sound super sensitive, especially when some scales go down to a milligram, but those ultra sensitive scales can only handle up to 20 gram while the load cell in this balancer can manage up to one kilogram because it needs to support the motor the wheel with its adapter so it's a bit of a trade-off but it turns out to be just right for balancing needs the way this device combines its two main components is pretty clever it spins the wheel at a set speed and during this spin it's constantly checking the weight on that sensitive scale sensor what it's doing is collecting data on how the weight changes at each angle of the wheel rotation, which likely forms a pattern similar to a sine curve. This happens because the imbalance in the wheel spins around and it either adds or takes away from the total weight due to the centripetal force. From the gathered data, the software identifies the peak's angle and also calculates the amplitude. This amplitude is used to determine the mass needed for balance, and the angle is used to position the wheel with the heaviest point upwards. So, you end up with a perfectly balanced wheel by adding the exact amount of weight in the exact spot needed to counter the heavy side. Finally, let's discuss the problems. First, let's tackle the most common issue reported, calibration failures. There's been a lot of guessing on why this happens, with some people unable to resolve it at all. Honestly, when my first calibration went smoothly, I was almost disappointed. I didn't run into the problems I'd heard about, which meant I couldn't troubleshoot them. Worse, it could have meant that some units just were defective. But then, after playing around with the device a bit, I stumbled upon the way to cause the failure and also how to avoid it. The instructions on the screen do prompt to remove the adapter before starting the calibration. I think some people misunderstood this step, thinking it was about weighing the adapter, which many had already done, so they left the adapter on. 
However, this step is crucial because it allows the software to take an initial reading without the adapter's weight. You can even hear it doing a little thump. Then after attaching the adapter, the machine takes a second reading, which gives the software enough data to accurately calibrate the scale sensor. Another point of feedback, or rather an observation some have made, is regarding the consistency of the balancing process. To verify, I conducted several tests by rerunning the balance process on the same wheel, removing the previously added clay each time. Indeed, I noticed some inconsistency. At times, the machine would suggest a single adjustment and the wheel would be balanced. Other times, it required more than three adjustments for the same wheel. More notably, the final amount of clay needed varied significantly, not just by the 0.2 gram one might expect due to sensor accuracy, but by as much as 0.6 gram. I spent some time trying to figure out why this was happening. Eventually, I realized that when I simply removed the clay and ran the process again without taking the tire off the machine, the balancer's suggestions were pretty consistent. However, if I removed the wheel and then reattached it, the outcomes were unpredictable. Sometimes the adjustments were the same, but other times they were quite different. This made me think it has to do with how the wheel is put on the adapter. Given the hex shape, there are six possible orientations for attaching the wheel, so I tried all six. For that, I conducted even more experiments and kept a log of all the results. For each run, I kept track of exactly where and exactly how much mass was added. And you know what? I definitely saw a difference between how the wheel was put on. There was one way that just didn't balance as well as the others. But after going over all my notes from these experiments, I started feeling a bit better. Turns out, in most cases, the results were quite consistent within the 0.2 gram accuracy. Except for that one quote-unquote bad side of the adapter, which, funny enough, was consistently not giving the best results. My suspicion is that the root cause of this inconsistency lies with the adapter itself. I noticed a slight wobble when it spun alone without a wheel. At the same time, the shaft itself did not have such wobble. We've reached out to SkyRC to let them know about this issue, hoping they can come up with a fix. But while we wait for their response, I recommend a practical approach. Mark the wheel and the removable part of the adapter. Then, experiment by attaching the wheel in three evenly spaced positions relative to these marks. This would allow you to observe how the balancing results vary with each position. By comparing the outcomes, you can identify which position requires fewer balancing steps and achieves a more precise balance. This trial and error method may feel slow initially, but once you find the right process, it can be repeated for accurate and consistent balancing. This saves time in the long run and ensures smoother rides. The other, less significant problem I ran into was with the rear wheels. The first time I tried to balance a rear wheel, it wouldn't spin at all. Instead, the machine made a louder noise than usual, which was pretty worrying. I thought maybe something had broken inside. After several attempts and testing it without a wheel to make sure the machine itself wasn't damaged, I figured that maybe the larger rear wheels were just too heavy or had too much inertia for the machine to start spinning in the 1 tenth scale mode. So I switched it to the 1 eighth scale mode and that did the trick. But this solution wasn't ideal because as I mentioned before, the machine assumes a certain radius to calculate the needed mass to balance the wheel. The radius for a 1 8 scale wheel is almost 50% larger, meaning the mass calculation would be off. I guess I could increase the suggested mass by about 50% as well, but this solution did not seem ideal. At first I was hesitant to touch the wheel when it tried and failed to spin, but then I decided to give it a gentle spin at the first second of rotation, and that worked well. We also reported that to SkyRC and we hope it can be fixed with a firmware update. But for now, if you run into this issue with larger, heavier wheels, just give them a little nudge and they should start spinning fine. All right, heading into the last stretch of our video, let's tackle the question that's at the core of the motivation behind this product. Why balance tires? Is it really a problem? You've probably heard the standard reasons. Vibrations from unbalanced wheels can make your car less stable on a track. Some also mention loose screws or an extra strain your shocks and suspension. But when the balancer suggested adding just about one gram of clay to fix the imbalance, I'll admit I was a bit skeptical. Could such a tiny imbalance really matter that much, especially if the weight of the whole car is 15 to 20 hundred times larger? So I decided to crunch some numbers to see just how big of an impact it could have. Here are some formulas. Feel free to check the math. 
The goal was to compare the weight of a car to the centripetal force generated by a mere one gram mass rotating inside a standard wheel when the car is moving at a nice speed of 30 feet per second, equivalent to about 20 miles per hour. I got this speed from a video of a race at SDRC Raceway I found on YouTube. The result? At this speed when the car was entering a turn, this is how the comparison of forces actually looks like. We only have 400 grams on the right, since the weight is divided between four wheels. The next question is, so what, how does it affect stability? Well, the stability of your car relies on the friction between the tires and the road. And there is such a thing as maximum force of friction, which is proportional to the force with which the tire is pushing down due to the car's weight. The harder you brake or the faster you go around the turn, the more you test the limits of this friction and risk sliding. Here's where wheel vibrations come into play. They cause the force pushing the car down to change dynamically, which affects the maximum friction force and can make your car lose traction sooner than you'd expect. But enough of this lecture. How can we see the effect with our eyes? I don't have a car to show this directly, and even if I did, demonstrating this could be tricky. So I came up with this. I used the Sky RC tire sander for my demo. With my power source, the sander spins the wheel at about 60 times a second. With the wheel size, this is equivalent to about 33 miles per hour, a bit faster than a car typically goes by my amateur estimate, but it illustrates the point well. Here I took a wheel I had already balanced and removed almost a gram of clay to unbalance it again. I then set up the sander with the wheel on a surface at a pretty steep angle, where it's fairly close to sliding down, but not close enough. The only thing keeping the sander in place is the same friction that prevents a car from losing traction on a track. When I turned it on, the unbalanced wheel caused the sander to vibrate and slide down the slope due to reduced friction. For comparison, I added the clay back to balance the wheel and gave it another go. This time, with the wheel balanced, there were hardly any vibrations, so the sander didn't move. I think this perfectly demonstrated how a balanced wheel helps maintain traction. I just wanted to see it slide again, so I took the clay off again to unbalance the wheel, and sure enough, the sander slid down the slope once more. As we wrap up this video of exploring the intricacies of wheel balancing with this device, I trust you found the journey enlightening and the strategies we discussed beneficial. Navigating through the initial hurdles to mastering a routine that delivers reliable outcomes has shown us the remarkable potential of this tool. With a bit of persistence and a willingness to experiment, perfecting wheel balance becomes quick and easy. So, if you're really into taking your RC experience to the next level, give this tire balancer a try. Thank you for being a part of this adventure. Keep exploring, stay curious, and never hesitate to venture into the unknown in search of better solutions.